On today's episode of Titus and Tate, Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, North Carolina, Indiana, yes. UCLA. Yes. All undefeated Tate, which can only mean one thing. It is the heart of football season. Wait, what? <laughs> uh the the college basketball blue bloods are dominating football. We were as, as first reported on Titus and Tate, um, Kentucky is in fact the football school mm -hmm. uh, officially. Yeah. Um, you know, when we do when we do these exercises and George we, Blanda, as we pointed yeah, out. As, yeah. As when we do these exercises and we go through and we decide uh who's a football school and who's a basketball school, some people will say, That was stupid. What a dumb idea for a segment. Uh, and then you look up and all the blue bloods of college basketball are undefeated in football when the likes of Texas A and M and Notre Dame and L S U and uh, all these other schools are losing. All these basketball schools are winning. Uh, yeah. And I just want to say, who's laughing now? Because it's, it's, yeah, it's not that stupid, is it, folks? And guess what? The joke that is as old as time that uh, they're getting ready for basketball season, yep. it's dead right now. It's dead. Which is amazing. It's good. So right maybe now, you aren't laughing as much. Yeah, we'll check back in a week because... Uh, <laughs> you might be laughing again, but Carolina <laughs> has a bye week. So, <laughs> you, so you shall not be laughing at our expense. And I have to propagate this two-week period as much as I can. Uh, we're going to talk about football a little bit because uh, we we like football. We, uh, we, we love football. The, the, if, if you're just tuning into the show, we uh, this is a sports podcast. We talk sports on this podcast. We're just two yeah. dudes, sometimes three, talking sports. It's what we do. And Brian uh, Dayball is my, like OG, my guy. Like back in the day with Lombardi, Brian Dayball was like a quarterback's coach, just feeding Lombardi information, feeding me information, you. trying to teach me about football like I was an idiot. And I was like, I'm an idiot. <laughs> teach me everything. And now he's the head coach of the Giants, Jim's Giants. I always forget that you uh, – you did a football show. I was plugged in once upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly but surely, fell out. Uh, there are some college basketball <laughs> notes that we might get to. Uh, the Maui field is – how do we not get the scoop? The Maui field two years from now is out? Is that true? 2024, yeah. Yeah. Rostein's <clears throat> scooping this? Like, what the hell's going on? Rostein is just, like, a different animal and a different beast. And uh, I don't know what he's up to, but I do think that he gets perturbed when we scoop anything Maui-related. Yeah, like we're the Maui guys. We, we are the Maui. We have Maui, every Maui scoop, and um, I, I I'm of the opinion that I don't think this is a real scoop. I think Brostin is just like forming the field, and then <laughs> and then he's going to pressure Maui into he's leaking the field yeah, that he yeah, wants that he wants. Yeah, and then he's he's making it embarrassing for Maui, so now they have to go get those teams or else yeah. Yeah. they're calling UConn right now. Yeah, because everyone's like, damn, what a sick field, and, and, <laughs> and now if they don't deliver on that field, yeah. then, then they look like losers. Dave Odom is losing his mind yeah. right now. Yeah, Rostein holds Maui <laughs> hostage. I don't like it one bit. Uh, we're going to talk a lot of football, though, because uh, it is absolutely hilarious that all these basketball uh, blue blood programs are undefeated, and uh, we're going to work our way through that. Uh, but first, coming up. Woody Durham. I think that might be a show first that I said first coming up. I said but first coming up, and then you said uh, right there. Did I blow it? Did I? No, just, uh, I think. Did, did I? Uh, I think we're okay. Yeah, I think that might be. But a, we've been we're, we've been out of town. You know what I mean? We, yeah. We're, we're just coming back. We're, we're fresh. We're in back. Yeah. We're back in the studio. <laughs> football's back. I was thinking about this as I was putting uh, notes together um, for for the show today because we 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 all talk to each other. We're like, let's talk about football, man. Like, because football's back, and how exciting is that? And yeah. Football. And then I uh, I realized the day the NFL started. Uh, my entire Twitter feed was the the uh, the opening week, or it was Thursday, Thursday, and then yeah. again on Sunday, it was the exact same thing. And then last, like basically, it's happened like six times. It's just people <laughs> tweeting in all caps, "Football is back." Yes, but it's come back, like you said. But it's, it comes yeah. back like there six was times. week zero when week zero hit. It, football's back. Football's and now back. that's like two weeks ago. Yeah, but football is again back. And then I realized uh, we're back in the studio, <laughs> but like we do this every so often, where we just like disappear from the studio because one of us goes on vacation. And then two weeks later, we come back and we talk about it on the show that we're we back. We should say we go home, you know what I mean? Yeah. That sounds better. Like, <laughs> yeah. when you say that you, we go just go vacation. on vacation, people are like, God, these guys are just taking a ton of vacation. We go home. We go see our I'm family. Hendricks County, Indiana. Yeah, we get out of days. L.A. for a little bit. We try to stay sane. Try to stay connected to the people. Pulse in the nation. I'm the only human on earth that says he's vacationing <laughs> in Hendricks County, Indiana. Um But I realize that, that that that's what content is now, is you just you, you, you look at the calendar – and you say that this is back, and and we, we're we're guilty of that as well. We're gonna do it when basketball season rolls around. Yeah, basketball's back. <clears throat> uh, but but I think that's what that's as you get older, that's just what you do. You just say like, oh my god, it's back. 
this is back. Yeah, <laughs> if you say back and it's not a back problem, yeah, you get excited. You know what I mean? It's it's the best backs you can think of. Or or you look at the calendar and realize it's the anniversary of something that was cool. <laughs> and on this day, yes. twelve years ago, who could forget the quarterback of the school threw for five hundred yards? Mm-hmm. Where were you on that day twelve years ago, Tate? And yeah. then uh, they, I, we could just do a podcast where we do that. We were just say this is back, but also remember when this happened. Mm-hmm. And it's just remember when? Yeah. Um, football's back though. We are back in the studio and, uh, college football is absolutely hilarious. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about because, uh, right now the, as I said at the top, the basketball blue bloods are good. Tate. The, really good. The, the, really good. <laughs> Kentucky really is. Kentucky is a top 10 team right now. And that's not a joke. They, it's not like, uh, an exaggeration. No, they're, no, they're quite literally the number yeah. nine team in the country. And they went to the swamp, the team that America fell in love with last week, Florida gets stomped out by Kentucky. So where where did we land on the uh, we, we we were laughing about Mark Stoops versus John Calipari and I I can't remember where we landed on this and has Cal come out and um, Cal was on the bandwagon Have you seen that he he was, he was on the bandwagon yeah. I, I was I was asking no, no he, I haven't he seen a development put on Instagram like a picture of them winning and was like th- this is what this program does Oh nice like he is fully on the bandwagon of UK football In fact in John Calipari's mind none of that ever happened and if you bring it up <laughs> you're done. Get out of his face. You're wiped away. So the beef is squash. It's it not only squash, he's on the wagon. Like he is literally loading the wagon. And they're like, is that Coach Cow? And he's like, what's up, baby? He's, it's a rubber band <laughs> effect. He's now overcompensating. And yes. he's like, he, no, loves, he, he, he loves Kentucky loves football more than Mark Stoops does. He's, he's like saying things that Mark Stoops like, don't say that. Like, that's putting too much pressure on my guys. He's like, we're not losing a game this year. Yeah. Watch out, Alabama. <laughs> um, I was thinking about it, uh, though, of all the teams that are K- – Kentucky being good, uh, and, and I watched most of that game when they were beating Florida, and, and it was not a fluke. It was like – No. Were, like, they, they tried to there, – there were a few times there where they tried to give the game away, and I was like, oh, damn, there we go. Because my brain is conditioned for Kentucky football has to play perfectly to go um, into an environment like the Swamp and, and pull off an upset like that. Uh, and and when mistakes start happening, they're screwed. So when mistakes started happening with Kentucky, I'm like, this is I'm the like, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah, there it goes. And then they kind of ran away with the game. They kind of dominated the the, the second half of that game. End up winning by ten. Yeah. Um. And and yeah, Kentucky is like a legitimately good team. I don't know how good the rest of the teams are. I think Kansas, uh, beating West Virginia. Kansas has my attention for real. <laughs> But that, but we we joked that we always knew so much about Kansas football. Yeah. Even if you don't want to know it, it's in your you, face. You always somehow. know about Kansas. And this football. year is another great example of that. Kansas finding their way into the zeitgeist. But uh, uh, North Carolina uh, beats App State um, who, on the road. Yeah, true road game. A Forty thousand people. Did you guys beat this this past weekend? Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern. What, mm-hmm. Okay, that was a close one, wasn't it? It's a tough game. Tough team. Road game. True road game. Was it really? True road game. At Georgia Southern. What is Mac Brown doing? We're, we're playing real hard-nosed football because we're trying to win a title. You played at App State and then at Georgia Two Southern? Two true road games with a, with a rookie quarterback so, who now leads the nation in touchdowns and in yards. And some people are saying, well, they played three games. And you're right. Three so if, if, if my father was on the show, he would make the argument that Carolina deserves the number one. They should be a top five team. They should be number one because they're yeah. three and zero and have two true. Graham runners. Couch is yeah. Graham Couch is. waving his fist in the air. He's like, "How is Carolina not a top ten team?" Um. So Kentucky. Uh. I. I, I want to get to the point I was going to make, which is that um. Kentucky, I think, is actually very good. Yes. I, like they're I, real. I, I'm not alone in that thought. Obviously, yes. they're a top ten team. Uh. But when when Kansas beat West Virginia, it. I. I, I thought it was kind of funny. Um. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not saying Kansas isn't good. There's obviously some going. On. Lance Leopold has something cooking there. Like I mean, uh. The 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 stats that everyone's throwing out that Kansas hasn't won a game and yeah, I don't know. It, it, it it's. You know the stats. They're owing God knows how many games and whatever. And, and they were down fourteen you zero know. early. Yeah, like it, it, they and then they just started. You know, they're now they're now two and zero. Um, and I, I I I can't help but think that's funny to me. And I don't know how good they are, <laughs> but that one was funny. And then I started thinking through like what what are the funniest of all these football schools again or all these basketball schools that are now football schools uh, again, Kansas, Kentucky, Duke, North Carolina, Indiana, UCLA. I think Syracuse and Maryland are also undefeated football right now. Yeah, which one of those to you is the funny? Because Kentucky, I'm like they're in the SEC. That's not really. It's kind of funny because they're the the one basketball school in the SEC. But 
at the same time, I'm, I, what my eyes are, are seeing. It's not, not a really, joke. It's not really a joke. They're like actually very good. And they've been, mm -hmm. Mark Stoops is, uh, has, has built a great program there. I don't think North Carolina is that funny either. When North Carolina is good at football, I'm not I mean, really like shocked by it. Yeah. Well, we have all the recruiting classes to, to boot, yeah, right. but we, but they just don't produce. You know right. what I mean? Our, our defense on paper is like top 10 defense in the country. I think they're ranked 181st or something right now. Um, so. There you go, and I think uh, I think UCLA is not funny to me when whenever UCLA, UCLA can football, be good because UCLA yeah. it's like yeah they beat dude, LSU be, I was at that game last year yeah. yeah like UCLA football should be good but uh, Indiana and Kansas and Duke I don't care how many years they, they could go I mean Kansas went to a, a damn Orange Bowl not that long ago yeah oh I mean, seven something like yeah, that fifteen years I guess starting to get a long time but yeah um, Kansas will always be funny to me when they're good at football and mm -hmm. Indiana I think those are the two. But how do you? What's the funniest do of all the of well, the, all the basketball schools? You're like, this is hilarious. I hope they go undefeated because that would just for the memes alone. Be yeah, this is how you know I'm being objective. The funniest would be Duke, and Duke plays at Kansas on September 24th. There is an there's a head to head <laughs> blue really? blood blood bath, blood bath on the way. Yes, Duke at Kansas September 24th, and to me, whoever wins that game is the funniest, right? Because Kansas Duke, those are the two teams. Like when I I saw Duke blowing out Temple. You know, I had to look back at the bottom line to say, did they get the, they flipped those scores? What what happened here? And Matt Rule, Matt Rule should go back to Temple. That's my new thing. He needs to go back mm. to Temple. He'd be a great coach at Temple. But anyways, Duke would be funny. Kansas is definitely the funniest though. Kansas fans would admit that because even Kansas yeah. basketball fans are, you know, they they hear those jokes that we talked about that are gone right now, which is they're ready for basketball season. I, I think Kansas and Indiana are, are are on another level of Indiana's funny of being one dimension. Like if yeah. it's a football or basketball thing, the sliding scale of how much they care about basketball versus football, mm -hmm. it's Indiana and Kansas. I think they're on. Another but I've seen own. Indiana fans like turn into football fans more so than I think I've seen Kansas fans. That's true. I'll, I'll, I'll say that the like time, I, I want to give Indiana the benefit well, of here's, the doubt. Here's here's the thing. It's the, there, there's a trickle down from the pro situations mm -hmm. and Indiana football in the state of Indiana. Um, obviously, Notre Dame has been a, a, a notable program its entire existence. Uh, Purdue has has been in and out for, you know, there, there were <laughs> periods where you drew, drew Brees, Brees era. <laughs> 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 OK, I'll just say it, Drew Brees. Uh, Bob Greasy went there. Yeah. Um, no, you got some hitters. You got some good players. That Kyle won. Orton almost won a Heisman in 2004 and then fumbled yeah. against Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. Wisconsin scooped and scored and ran it right up me and my father, who were in the end zone. Mike the, Allstott, right? Mike Allstott, yeah. yeah. yeah Purdue. Uh, Purdue, Purdue's been good. But like as, as a state, Indiana hasn't really cared about football until Peyton Manning. And then mm -hmm. the Colts started to become relevant. And then there was a trickle down where like high school football got better. Um, Indiana football for a half second – didn't get better, but like people cared in a yeah. way they never cared. They were back in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, and they, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know if they had some moments. I don't know if it really matters because, like, at the end, if you look up their the the team records at the end of the year, you probably don't notice much of an uptick. But uh, a couple years ago, they thought they that was really it to me was a couple years ago during the COVID year. Yeah, Carolina when, and Indiana came into the year and they were like, we're top fifteen program. When IU thought that they belonged in the Big Ten championship game because they lost to Ohio State, but then Ohio State had to cancel some games because of COVID. Oh yeah. Do you remember that? And then yeah. IU fans were arguing. And then that coming they, to the next season, they had a bunch of hype. Like they were yeah. they were preseason ranked and then the, and then it all went to hell. But that I, was last year. I think Doomy I think uh it 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 doomed the Indiana football arc when you you lose to a team and then uh, uh, like Ohio state was undefeated the entire season beat Indiana and in head to head. And then Indiana fans thought that they deserved to be in the big, that, that was such a loser mentality. I think it's doomed their program. But um, yeah. my point was like they're, they're based on the Colts, the interest around like the Indiana, I, I feel like the IU fans will pivot to football when like the Colts are good. Cause they'll watch the Colts on Sunday and they're like, damn, why can't we have this? this would be sick if our, our college yeah. team was this good. And then they start caring more. And I wonder if the same thing happens because of the Chiefs, you know? Mm. Like if maybe like Kansas. Like slowly over time, yeah, Patrick University Mahomes Kansas, yeah. gets people. Has slow, is slowly going to get people to care more. I don't know. It's it, but they're both the, – that's one That's one A and one B is Indiana and Kansas. The fact that – I want them both to go undefeated every football season because it's hilarious. I, like, I, right now, Kansas is first in the Big 12. <laughs> 
and just saying that is funny. So I think I think at the end of the day, that's our choice. The funniest blue blood is by far Kansas. It's Kansas. Yeah, I think the Jayhawk on the the helmet <laughs> also is funny. They're, they're, like the, the, it they just have, looks they wrong, have a, yeah. right? It doesn't look right when they're out there playing football. I mean, right? I think the the Jayhawk looks the, the 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 logo. Kansas logo is just objectively funny. It's just a cartoon. Yeah. Bird, obviously. Yeah. It's very um, Looney Tunes. It's, it's a Looney Tunes bird, but there's something romantic about it. Uh, yeah. An Allen Fieldhouse, uh-huh. you know. Uh-huh. There's there you, you see it in Allen Fieldhouse, and you're, you're like, like wow, looks, like it looks goofy, but it like plays here because it just looks old timey in a in a historic venue like that, and it all comes together and ties in. You see it on the side of a football helmet; it's just funny. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's just there's no other way to describe yeah. it, but funny. It looks like a chicken house or something that is sponsoring like a local rec football <laughs> yeah, team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man what what else is going on in the college football that has your attention dude it was, it was a fun weekend yeah i mean obviously i think florida kentucky was the one that really got everyone going um miami are we sure they're good i also learned this weekend that moral victories are possible in college football texas loses right but it was pretty shocking to Texas. yeah you're what what, what Walk, walk me through this. You're fired up about no. you, you don't you don't you don't love Texas being back. <laughs> I, you're upset about this. No, is this I, a Mac Brown thing. No, Are you I, upset that Mac no. Brown's going to leave to go back to Texas. Texas is an ally. I like Texas. I pulled for Texas in the 2005 and 2009 championship game. For the record, I like Texas football, but I don't like that Texas lost against Alabama. And yes, they made it a close game, mm-hmm. but the moral victory of a loss got them in the top 25. I've never seen well, that in my entire life. I think the refs is what it was. I think it was refs. I think like if you watch the game, you're like you 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 come away from that saying Texas should the the Texas won that the, the refs were bad both ways. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And I think wink, Texas, wink. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I think yeah, that, that's so you're that, saying because of that they got a moral bump into the top twenty. And Quinn Ewers hurting his shoulder, um, that was also. You know the, the, that that factored in, but this happened in 2009 in the national championship game. Marcel Darius yeah. literally was like, "I'm taking out Colt McCoy." He did take out Colt McCoy. I'll never forget Colt McCoy coming out and then just like looking at his arm. It was like my arm is dead. I can't even move my arm. And then the Alabama defense was celebrating like <laughs> we, we knocked him out. And that was really the changing of the guard in college football to Alabama. So this was a nice moment where if Texas wins this game, I'm I'm all in on back. Texas. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm all in. Coming. Exactly. The yeah. pendulum swings back this yeah. way. But then it was it didn't happen, but still they get the bump as if it kind of did. I don't understand that. It's weird. It's it's blue blood treatment, dude. It's, yeah. it's we we're doing a, we I get it. people I guess want I get Texas it. to be back so badly that they'll they'll do whatever it takes. And that, that includes, but it, it happens to Notre Dame every year. Notre Dame oh, leads the, Notre Dame has more moral speaking victories. Speaking of, my God, Notre Dame. <laughs> I mean, Notre Dame lost to 11 at Ohio State, lost by 11 at Ohio State, the first game of the of the season. And looked pretty good and, at times. But to your point of like moral victories, it was like in any any program with the, there, there's no scenario where Ohio State loses by 11 and any Ohio State fan was like, well, that was pretty bad. We're not too, that was too bad. And that was like Notre Dame. <laughs> That was Notre Dame's <laughs> takeaway. That was pretty much all the fans that I saw. That was Notre every fan. They were like, "We're we look like we could compete with those guys." Yeah, like what? Yeah, you you scored. <laughs> you, your offense was dog shit. The whole. And now like, how was that? And now their quarterback's out. And yeah, Drew Pines in. I mean, and their new coach Marcus Freeman, who I really like by all accounts, hasn't won a game yet. Is he the greatest zero three coach of all time? That's what people are saying. I think he is. People were saying he's better than Brian. Ke- like Brian Kelly has to be loving every second of it at this point. But he's also a maniac. His press conference. You see, he brought a ten dollar bill today and was like, "This is my my donation for like the end of the year party with the media or something." Did he really? <laughs> yeah, dude, the guy's a what maniac. A psychopath. <laughs> what a psychopath. College football is crazy. That's, I love college football <laughs> yeah. so much, dude. It, it, we miss characters in college basketball, like like some of the ones we see in football. And I'm ha- actually happy some of them aren't in college basketball because I can just enjoy it from a distance. Yeah, you know what I mean. Uh, so th- 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 this will this there's no way this will be true by the end of the season. But um, I do feel slightly optimistic that there might be a Scotia parody in college football this year. That's Skish. the other part. Just a skosh. <laughs> just a skosh. Um, and uh, you know, I, I I get that there are times in every season when when you get excited about that that the uh, that like Alabama is not chaos just a is juggernaut. going like yeah. like Alabama loses to an unranked team and you're like holy shit Alabama's not going to win the national title. Spoiler alert: they run the table and win the national title. Yeah, you know? I don't know if that's actually ever happened. Don't fact check. It. But <laughs> um, 
You know, like they're 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 because we well, even are, can, didn't Ohio State lose to Virginia Tech. Yeah, we lost to Virginia yeah, exactly. Tech the first yeah. year of the playoffs. So everyone we, wrote them out. Yeah. Uh, if if you're of a certain age, you've grown up watching college football in a world where the second a team loses, they're out of contention. Mm-hmm. Um, this new era with the playoff that does that's not how it works. But our brains are hardwired to think that every time a team loses, so like watching Alabama, we have Texas, BCS brains. Yeah, yeah we, we have BCS brains. brains. BCS and brains. and if if Bama would have lost to Texas. It ultimately would not have mattered in the sense of like Bama still controls their own destiny yeah. to win a national title, but part of it was that that like <laughs> your your monkey brain is watching that you're like holy shit if Alabama Texas, loses yeah it's they're over done. they're yeah. done the dynasty's done <laughs> yeah exactly throw dirt on them it's over <laughs> um, so uh, I I I understand that uh, uh, I don't know I I I get sucked into this trap all the time of thinking that like th- that we might actually see some sort of parody in college football in a way we never have but. Um, I don't know. Bama, Bama looking vulnerable against Texas got me excited because um, there's, I, they they have a between Bama and Georgia. Bama has clearly a harder schedule. Georgia is sort of a cakewalk until they play Kentucky. SEC East. Yeah. Great play to great play. That'll to that'll be Bama has a harder road. Yeah. Um, but looking so susceptible against Texas. I don't know, man. There might be a path where maybe Bama and Georgia don't actually make it. There's not two SEC teams. Or maybe like Kentucky does get it. Maybe the second SEC team ends up being Kentucky. That's exciting. Yeah. Right? Am I crazy to think that that could happen? That Kentucky might be Georgia? Cause that's a that's in Lexington, isn't it? Yeah, I like the, I like the Georgia Kentucky. As I was just talking about the SEC East, I like that battle for the SEC East, and I like that those two teams are actually going to be legit and fun to watch. And Georgia <clears throat> is by far the best team in the country. Or I think. what if what if Bama loses uh, to Texas A and N? Probably not. Well, they won't lose to Texas A and They're gonna beat the shit out of Texas A and M. Um, they play Arkansas though. Arkansas is good. What if Bama loses? Mm. Bama loses like one game along the way. Um, to an SEC team, they still win their division. They still go to the SEC championship, and then they lose to Georgia. And now they're two loss. Like maybe they they don't make the playoff. Then that's that. Then that's juicy. I don't know. I'm starting to see a path where Bama. I'm not like celebrating yet, but like yeah. they, they look susceptible. And you're like, oh, okay, this is interesting. We haven't really seen and it, it. It would be nice not to have two SEC teams guaranteed every right. single time because yeah. then everyone else is fighting for two spots. Or if it's going to be two SEC teams guaranteed, it's not the two teams at the start of the season <laughs> that we all circled and said it's going to be the teams. <laughs> yeah. And they also played for the National Championship last year. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So if like Kentucky's <laughs> one of those SEC teams or Arkansas somehow mm-hmm. uh, gets in there. That's fun, right? Yeah. Um, Ohio State, Michigan – is actually a toss up at this point. Like I think e- even the 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 uh, most brash Ohio State fan has to respect Michigan. They beat us last year, you know. Like you have to. They're number um, four now. Yeah. Andrew. So the idea coming into the season was going to be Bama, Georgia, Ohio State, and then a fourth team, probably Clemson. If not Clemson, maybe like Texas A and M or uh, throw in you know USC if you want to get excited about them. Mm-hmm. Um, but but that seemed to be what like everyone's playoff picture was. Now all of a sudden, like I don't know, man. Like from what I've seen so far, I don't think Ohio State is that much better than Michigan. I still think we'll beat them in Columbus, but uh, yeah, the other quarterback is better than McNamara. Yeah, JJ from, McCarthy. Yeah, he yeah. was like eleven for twelve and looked great. I mean, he he made me believe more in Michigan than you know the the. He's gonna start. The case. He's gonna be their yeah. guy. Um, I do love the JJ that, that one guy's named JJ and one guy's last name is McNamara because it just makes it, it my college basketball brain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so is Mich- Michigan's a basketball McNamara. school. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> JJ versus McNamara, great, great debate. So, uh, all right, McNamara won a national title, but he wasn't the best player. Was he him on the national title team? I don't know. But there's a <laughs> chance with this season, just talking about that rivalry, they could be one and two. You know, let's say Georgia slips up against like a right. Tennessee, right? Tennessee's another team that Hendon Hooker is just. I've always liked him. He's a winner. So, I mean, they they're gonna figure out how to be in the mix, Tennessee, and then they're gonna figure out how to shoot themselves in the foot, but. One of those in the mix moments could be upsetting a Georgia or something like that, and that opens the door for Ohio State Michigan one two matchup. That would be sick, which would be great because that's the best rivalry game in college football. Thank you, Tate. Well, it's very similar to Carolina Duke. I have I, I tip my cap. Um, yeah, but Ohio State Michigan's a toss up in a way that uh, you know, I, I know Michigan won last year, but um, for for a long time it hasn't been. You know, when when you're yeah. when you're looking at the landscape of the Big Ten and you're saying pick a playoff team, it's Ohio State, 100. percent It was a high. joke last yeah. year going into the game that Michigan had no chance. You know, yeah. everyone was like Ohio State always mauls these yeah. guys, and then it was a snowy and game. And it this worked year, out great. Uh, Ohio State's going to be favored in the game because Ohio State will be at home, and I think at, at the end of the day, um, the 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 talent of Ohio State will when when the Vegas lines come out and all that, I, Ohio State's going to be favored. I agree. And unless something insane happens between, but it'll be like two and a half. But three, yeah, yeah, like and that. and if yeah. Michigan wins, it won't feel like 
as big of an upset as it did last year. And my that's just ultimate my ultimate point is like as you look at the landscape of this thing and trying to figure out who's going to come out of the Big Ten, it's actually like a toss up. There's a debate to be had. Last year, Michigan even, State's in there. Yeah, yeah, and last year it was like it's Ohio State until proven otherwise. And mm-hmm. this year it's now like I don't know, man. It was Michigan last year and they beat them last year. Maybe they could do it again. Uh, USC has emerged. They're fun. I haven't watched a ton of them. I watched a little bit, and Caleb Williams is awesome. Yeah. Um, That's pretty but, uh, much my takeaway. I have not watched much. I watched the Rice highlights, and then I watched a little bit of the Stanford game. I mean, always playing Stanford is tough for USC, so to get a win there is nice. And then Andrew Luck was there. Reminded me about you know your Colts theory about football, like Andrew Luck. When he was there, I guess that helped with the football. And then he left. And then, then he left, it, and it didn't and help. And it didn't help. Yeah. yeah. So – Whoa. <laughs> um, uh, they play at Utah October 15th. They don't, they don't play Oregon in the regular season, USC. Um, nice dodge. I don't know. They could be – I think they're going to be a factor in the playoff picture, right? Chris, Clemson. our director who went to USC, brought up to me Fresno State, and we have to point out the Bulldogs. Sounds like a trap game. You know what I mean? Fresno State comes up here. Lincoln Riley's thinking what? ahead. What, they, they, they play this weekend? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So be careful. At, at USC? Or yeah, I think it's Fresno? at USC. Oh, that's just that's just like it's a California trap game. So put it on the radar. You know what I mean for some of the people that are buying stock right now in USC football. <laughs> watch out for the Bulldogs. That, that just reeks of a uh, <laughs> a guy who is doesn't want to get ahead of himself. And yeah, excited about yeah. The, which the, is the, I like yeah. that. That's a good mentality. It's, Chris is going to say every game's a trap game this season. That that's USC what I say. Into. Yeah, App State trap game. But no, USC is is there, like there's a real. Um, I, I I think Utah would have been in the picture before Florida beat them, but like, there's now USC is now going to be in the playoff picture. I think. Yes. Until agreed, they're number seven. You know, right we'll now. check back in after the Utah game in October, but um, there's that. There's Cle- Clemson. I think is better uh, than they were last year. They still need a quarterback and, though. Like they they still have a major blind spot to me at, at Clemson. But like you said, they have all the talent everywhere else to right. compete with everybody. So they're a top four, you know, potential team. Miami, you said, are we sure they're good? They play at A and M on Saturday. Um, but I, I was just like that. That was a take. Like it, it all starts at the top when Bama looks susceptible. Then I start getting excited about the yeah. rest of everything. But uh, Bama looking susceptible, then there there was a cascade of like, oh my god, is there maybe some some parody going on in this sport, <laughs> but we're also two weeks in and we'll look up at the end and, and when the dust settles, it'll be the same four teams. Yeah. But it's pretty wild that Notre Dame, when we started the year, I remember we had the top 25, the AP rankings and we were looking at them. And it was like, you could have blindly put, it was like Alabama, Georgia, you know, Ohio state, you could go down and say, mm-hmm. Oh, the, that's the exact top five. It would be And Notre Dame was number five. And now they're completely, they suck. Yeah. They're just completely out of the way, which is pretty shocking, but it does open the door to Mike Bray basketball school i think notre dame as a basketball school that's looking like the future right now and if i was a notre dame fan i would lean into mike bray and remember that you booed him once upon a time you yeah. let your students yeah, you, boo booed, him. you booed this man you booed the man who is the future of your sports right and now your football coach is 0 and three mm-hmm. and yeah and who's is, is anyone booing because boo- <laughs> I, I, i'm waiting <laughs> mike bray mike bray's just sitting in his office <laughs> I, I I'm in a I'm in a tough spot with Notre Dame because I have hated Notre Dame my whole life. Mm-hmm. Um, as a non-Catholic growing up in the state of Indiana, it, it comes very easy. Uh, to, <laughs> really, as a red-blooded American, and yeah. it comes easy, I guess, for a lot of people. But um, I, uh, I I hated Notre Dame forever. Brian Kelly being there was the greatest thing ever because it I, was that, amazing. That man is a scumbag. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> to the extreme. Like, hating Notre Dame with Brian Kelly was a different kind of hatred. Now it's almost like, uh, you know, I almost feel bad for him. But now Marcus Freeman, who I was at Ohio State with, and I, I don't know personally, but like I, I vividly remember watching him play at Ohio State. I, he, he was my era of Ohio yeah. State football. Uh, he's their head coach. He's a likable guy. Um, Great part guy. of me wants to see him succeed for that connection but then like the ohio state part of it but then the other part is like his failures make brian kelly look better (laughs) somehow and that's a disaster we can't have the worst case it's worst case scenario like brian kelly is going to sleep at night and he's smiling yeah and that's not what we want (laughs) we don't want brian (laughs) we don't want brian kelly smiling ever ever um yeah, I don't know, man. That that, that thoughts was my, and prayers those, to the Notre Dame fans. The, uh, what about what about a uh, Scott Frost getting fired? That was pretty crazy. I couldn't believe he'd already been there for five years. You know, like I remember, it felt like it was a snap ago that he got hired there to change yeah. Nebraska football. Well, it goes, it, it, goes it goes quickly. It goes by, yeah. It goes your, quick. Year five came by fast, and uh, yeah, I mean, it really sucks for him because he was the hottest name out there, you know, and he takes the leap of faith. He goes back to his alma mater. 
That was a no brainer hire, but um, I him getting fired was uh, would it cost him like eight million dollars? No, it would have cost them eight million if they waited till October first. But now it it's fifteen million. It's fifteen million. If they waited, true? if they waited till October first, like apparently in his in his contract. Oh, oh, so so it cost them eight million. Like yeah, I, yeah. That, that's why everyone was saying yeah, like yeah. this seven and a half million thing. Or exactly. Whatever. It was, exactly. It was on top of on top of what they so were. So it cost fifteen million, but had they waited, they could have saved saved eight million. Eight million. But they were like, so, we'd just get this guy out of my face. Yeah. They're like which is nuts. They're like, we'd rather pay eight million dollars to get this guy out of our face. And he's this is his alma mater. Yeah. Which like the, yeah. as far as like coaching carousels go, I don't. Um, if you would have waited till October first, I don't feel like you're behind the eight ball, really. No, the coaching it, it, it like, just goes to show like that's how, how much, badly yeah, they hated. They're, this they're like, get this man out of yeah. my face, and because uh, when you're you know supposed to be the one that leads people to the promised land, and you fail at that kind of level, I mean, obviously that that's not fun. But also, who's going to win at Nebraska? It started this whole debate where can you win in Nebraska? You know, that's the college football conversation now, and. Uh, I have, oh, Polini. Yeah, I was like, I think I, I was like, I think I've seen people I've win seen, in Nebraska. Yeah. So I, think, I, I was like, I'm gonna have to go with a yes for me, um, even though it wasn't Scott Frost. Dude, I thought Nebraska was gonna be good this year. I was stupid enough to like, I'll, I'll raise my hand and say I was one of yeah. the guys. That well, that's, was, I think that's been last like the story year, with their team, right? Every last year, year like, every game they were. Jim and I were in uh, Norman for the Oklahoma game, and they Nebraska was like, they, they're not like a highly thought. Of, they, they they went in that game like not highly thought of. They played well. It was close. That was like the story of Nebraska every single game last year. I, I don't know. I, they win three games last year, I think. But like, yeah. of their eight or nine losses, however many they had, it felt like all of them they were in the game at some point. Well, so if, I thought, they were surely, if they were Texas, they'd be a top 20 team. Right. Surely they're going to turn the corner this year. Um, that did not happen. They're 0-2. And, and, and then they fired Scott Frost. And uh, I don't know, man. I, I, I freaking love co- uh, college coaching searches. I love it. Yeah. I, I can't get enough of it. I, a lot of people saying Dave Doran from NC State. My, are they my, no no i just i saw nc state people saying that so i just wanted to stroke the flame there but uh no i don't know who goes to nebraska but they have to get someone that at least is just like i'm trying to lean in who's to, the brad stevens of football yeah exactly. i was thinking about that as i was because th- uh that that's uh you know whenever there's a college it doesn't have to be college it could be literally any basketball job opens up i i my, my brain starts thinking like is brad stevens a viable candidate for this job um Who's that guy for football? Is it Urban? Mm. Is it Urban at this point? <laughs> like, who's who's the guy that no matter what job opens up between like you, you, now and the next five years? Yeah, you put his name out. You're gonna throw his name out there yeah. as like a. Uh, I guess, should we call him? I don't know. It's probably Urban Meyer. I think it is. And Coach O's up there too. Coach O. Coach yeah. O could go. Coach O would go anywhere that would welcome in him in as the coach right now. I think even if it was Nebraska, which would be hilarious. That talk about clashing of uh, cultures. It was. Uh, that was that was Gruden forever at the NFL level. I don't think it's going to be Gruden. It's not going to be Gruden anymore. <laughs> I think Gruden, and then Gruden uh, figured yeah, out how to send emails and. Yeah, th- this guy had a ten-year, hundred million dollar deal. I'll never forget that deal either. That was like the hugest deal, and it was it was the same thing we're talking about, which is like someone's trying to pay this guy to come out of the TV world to come. But that contract was that contract happened. The Gruden contract happened because, uh, in like the ten years leading up to that. Everyone, everyone, everyone wanted, wanted him. Yeah, 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 and exactly. his, yeah, and he was just like, no, no, don't want to coach, don't want to coach, and mm-hmm. then the price tag just kept going higher and higher. Um, the NFL, it's Sean Payton. Sean, Sean Payton. Sean Payton one. is going to be that guy. Sean Payton. You know why? Because the Dallas Cowboys, after about week six, yeah. you're going to start seeing these reports coming out. Sean Payton would would consider the idea of returning if the Cowboys called. Uh-huh. You know that kind of. Here's thing. here's my answer. I think the Brad Stevens of football, and um, I'm going to set it up this way: Brad Stevens being a guy who. At no point in time has shown any interest whatsoever in going back to college, but I disregard all of that evidence, and I choose to believe that he wants to go back to college, mm-hmm. just based on my own feelings towards the matter. Yeah. You know, yeah, um, deep down, just because deep down I think that's what he should do. Uh, it might be Cl- Cliff Kingsbury. That's a good what one. if it's Cliff Kingsbury, and he's like he's he's like if I floated Cliff Kingsbury to Nebraska, everyone would say that's insane. Um, he's got a great thing going in Arizona. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, are we sure it's a great thing going in Arizona? Mm-hmm. Are we sure? Yeah. Think about that. Chew on that one, everybody. Yeah. Are we sure this man isn't better suited to go back to college? And he definitely, and, he and Kyler Murray, I don't know what the word is for their relationship, but I would say contentious is probably close to what it is. I mean, he made the guy call plays to see how hard it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
You know what I mean? Like there, there can't be the best. Like I think there's some love lost there. But that's so. a tactic that works in college. You know, exactly. Like the, you can, you can pull that kind oh, of shit in yeah, college. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In college, it that's a wow, great call. Yeah. And if he goes to Nebraska, he would be like a king there. I would assume. Cliff Kingsbury is the Brad Stevens of football. I think. I think like the <laughs> young guy that's pick. like a. a He's Hot never name. technically won. I mean, Stevens had more success than uh, yeah. Stevens had a lot more success than Clean. But he never technically but won. He never technically like won a national title, but yeah. it's um, got close. Got close. Very Texas. Had a lot of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had a lot of buzz. Had a lot of excitement. <laughs> um, how about the A uh, and M? I, I wrote this down too. I want to talk about this. The Yell leader is getting roasted. By the, uh, <laughs> the App State stuff. Yeah. I mean, apparently, right, the video got taken down or, like, uh, it was, like, a very Scientologist uh, takedown. Jim, uh, a year later after going there. Um, <laughs> upon reflection. Upon reflection, your thoughts. Because uh, I I still, like, I still think back on our experience there, and it was a great time, you know? And, like, I watched the video of this guy at the, uh, the what, what, what was it called? Midnight Yell? Midnight Yell. Midnight Yell mm -hmm. for the App State game. And it's 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 you know it's it's indefensible how corny it is and yeah. stupid and everything and it's a friday night at I midnight know. jesus christ but i think back on our time there dude and watching them beat number one alabama that was sick and yeah so where where do we fall now a year later it was fun but it's definitely a weird vibe there all yeah. those roles and everything all those people follow yeah i don't know not my scene Am I allowed to? I guess what I'm saying is like, yeah, am I allowed? I'm not a publicly, big rules guy. <laughs> am I allowed publicly to say that the Texas A&M game I went to was one of the coolest things I've ever seen? <laughs> yeah, you can definitely mm -hmm. say that. <laughs> I know, but oh, I know I could say it. I'm just wondering <laughs> what the response is going to be when I do say that. I think there's going to be some questions asked. They're going to say, "What did they do to you while you were there? exactly? Are you indoctrinated? Exactly. Because that's the thing. Like, no one says that unless they're like, you just got to come and see it for yourself. But that, like, puts you into the trap. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't want to go into the beehive. I believe you. I'm, I'm sure. I, I walked on. away from it thinking, like, if Texas A&M, like, I was stupid enough to believe that, like, my visit there could help them turn a corner. <laughs> I thought that they and were a military they have the school. top recruiting class, though? Yeah. I, it had so nothing like, to do with me, but it was just like, people. oh, my God, are we? was I there for the moment that Texas A&M is back? Is back. <laughs> 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 uh, they beat Bama. They have the great recruiting class. Name, image, yeah, likeness. How did they convince all those people to go there? I mean, uh, I mean money, uh, money, duh. Duh. Uh, money, yeah. money. Also, Von Miller, like he embarrasses the Rams and basically is like, "I'm the reason y'all won a Super Bowl." And then they interview him afterwards. He's like, "Gig him." Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. so they're they're on the biggest stage as well. Texas and I and I thought uh because my, my my stance when we came away from it was like all oh, this is corny as shit it's very obviously a cult this is very weird if my kid said he wanted to go to Texas A and M I would you know throw him in a padded room until he yeah. changed his mind yeah um the, the, all of that is true but at the same time if you win and you beat Alabama on a last second field goal it's pretty I start cool. I start listening I start listening it's cool. <laughs> yeah. so uh I was thinking like maybe this is the turning of the corner and if A and M can be good this year. And uh, run the table, or, or you know, actually make a playoff, whatever, wh whatever standard it is, like actually be very, very relevant beyond like Johnny Manziel being good for a little bit, and then beating Alabama uh, on a field goal, um, like actually have a sustained thing. Maybe the corniness starts to wear off, or like maybe you know, maybe every time Texas A and M does anything, we're not all pointing and laughing at how absurd of a culture they have there. Mm -hmm. um, and then they lost to App State, and that video has been circulating like crazy, and I'm like. Uh, you're like I, I, I guess we're you're like yeah start. that is weird <laughs> you're like looking at it now you're like man what was I even thinking uh <laughs> it's also insane that App State actually would attack because when App State and Carolina were in their shootout you know and they were putting up 61 points on Carolina I was thinking to myself it's gonna be so bad when they go to Texas A&M and Texas A&M beats them you know 63 to 3 mm -hmm. and then everyone's like <laughs> you guys gave up 60 points to these bozos but thank God that so the the fact that that was already cemented in my brain when I I didn't even watch any of this game I I was out and about in Milwaukee at a wedding and then I look at my phone and it was very hit me like Michigan almost where I was like wait wait what and yeah. it's final score and then I watch the highlights and it still makes no sense I was listening uh, I can't recommend this enough by the way so I was uh, I was back in the Midwest for a long time uh, that's not the part I'm recommending <laughs> <laughs> hey not necessarily I, recommend I, I, that, uh, but quick Milwaukee beautiful city had a beautiful day really yeah had a beautiful you enjoyed day enjoyed milwaukee yeah gave me chicago vibes yeah i'm, I'm a, i will never talk bad about milwaukee 
like it's, it's, any any kind I of would, bad thoughts I had. Before I would argue it's out. the best suburb of Chicago. In fact, that Milwaukee <laughs> is. Uh, that's I've always seen it that way. So there you go. Um, no, I, I like Milwaukee as well. Yeah, well, thumbs up. Nice. Two thumbs did up. Did you see the Did you see the Fonz statue? No, there's a Fonz. <laughs> so I thought you were doing that. Well, <laughs> there's a Fonz serendipity statue. there. Um, uh, I was I was driving. Uh, uh, I was spending a lot of time in the Midwest. I I borrowed my mother's car to drive back and forth from Columbus to Indy. Yeah, see family, but then you know see Bronny and then go see family. <laughs> <laughs> they go see Bronny. Future family. Um, so uh, I'm I was driving on Saturday. I forget which direction I was. I was probably going from Columbus to Indy. Uh, and I was listening to uh, she's got like the serious deal in her car. She yeah, yeah. listen to like all oh, the billion channels. And I found the uh, I did this for the end of the Notre Dame game. I found the Notre Dame broadcast and then they lose. And I flipped it over to the Texas A&M game. <laughs> and I was listening to the Texas A&M broadcast. And that's the part I can't recommend enough is listening to the local Homer radio of like the big powerhouse program. As they're, it's very specific recommendation. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> but if you can find it, but if you can find it, <laughs> listening as they're getting their hearts ripped out by a tiny ass school that they thought they were going to beat by fifty, it was it was comedy, dude. It was like there was, at one point, um, I think it was it, it must have been the A and M game. There was yeah, because App State, correct me if I'm wrong, like App State was running the clock out, but they yeah. it was fourth down and there was still like two seconds left. I think. It doesn't matter, but but there was there was one point where like they they were playing the clock game, like trying to figure out do they have enough to just start kneeling it? Do they not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guys on the radio call were like they they were really trying to hold out the sliver of hope that in one second <laughs> yeah, they might yeah. fumble the snap, <laughs> scoop, run seventy eight yards for a time, you know. <laughs> they're like then, still got two other, seconds yeah. in this one. <laughs> yeah, the, other guy, <laughs> yeah. the other guy's like, no, nah, I don't, I don't see it happen. Well, no, nah, I don't. Yeah. You know, I've seen, I've seen, I've crazy. seen Stranger Things. And then, and, then the, and then you finally hear the defeat in his voice where he's like, yeah, I don't know. And there you have it, Mountaineers 17, <laughs> Aggies 14. <laughs> but you hear like the the big uh, – uh, Notre Dame kept throwing interceptions, right? Yeah. At the end of the game. Yeah. Um, and and I had no idea what was going on because I'm listening to the broadcast, and when they throw the pick, they just get silent. <laughs> they, don't, they don't say what happened. <laughs> they just eventually they back the pass. Oh no! Oh oh no! Oh, it was intercepted. That's how they did. And they, that'll uh, be uh, yeah. the herd's ball on the 31 yard line. First and ten. <laughs> yeah. I was cracking up. It was so good. No, it makes it feel real when you're listening to like like you said the local radio broadcast of a college football game so, yeah, or college it basketball does, yeah. either one it's just like and then they add to it different you know like but it gives you it gives you an understanding of how big of an upset or how big of a gut punch it is when you're listening to the homer team mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and just the the the, the sadness in there because they they're they're they are in no way shape or form professionals about it they are very obviously like human beings just like watching yeah. this game and they have the exact reaction that you and I have uh, when we're watching, and that's why fans and, love listening yeah. to it. Yeah. They're like, "That's me, right?" Yeah. Now. And then they call into the and show, then, and they're like, "I cannot believe that we did not go for it on fourth and one." It's also why, when it's a national broadcast that they're watching, they get pissed off that the <laughs> <laughs> that they don't know the team, <laughs> or that they're not they're not as happy for. Yeah, yeah. Why aren't you excited? We just threw a touchdown. Yeah, when Gus Johnson gets excited that Michigan scores on Ohio State, Ohio State fans like lose. I hate. Like, like, I hate like, Gus. Gus why was he so Johnson. excited? What, was he pulling for Ohio State? That's what the, the team that loses every time. Like the broadcasters are pulling for the other team. Because it seemed like he got really excited every time they scored touchdowns. And he never got excited. We never scored, I guess. We, well, we I guess did that's why. Yeah, I guess that's why. Uh, it'd be funny if uh, the local announcers, like, say they're down three touchdowns or four touchdowns when it's, like, out of hand, you know, with, like, two minutes left, and they throw a pick. They're like – and the game's over, and they actually stop covering the game. They, they just, they just, they just else. shut up. They yeah. just yeah. Uh, mercy. No, roll. they just like wrap it up, and like they have some other filler rerun show come on. <laughs> they yeah. even... Like they literally are like, this game's over. Golden Girls, the podcast. That's what I would do. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just be like, and that's all, folks. Shut it down. That reminds me, my uh, my favorite thing to do every football season, and uh, I I busted this out um, during the Bama Texas game like forty times. Is to prematurely say this one's for this is for the game right here. Yeah. Um. On like second and nine, mm -hmm. with like six minutes left. That's that's a classic and, one. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and second a nine quarter. point game. Yeah. I'm like, well, this Pull is back this, ties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is it. This is it right this here. All the comes marbles down to right this. here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gipper. And then everyone in the room's like, or is it? Does he know something? I don't know. And yeah. They're doing the math, trying to figure out. Or just like right when the other team snaps at you, you're yelling pick six. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I'm the guy that I'll, I'll call pick six, like every Fumble. play, and then it happens. Yeah, you like told, called told it. you. I called, called it. it. Then I'm running around. The I room saw it. I, I saw it. I saw the coverage. 
I saw the coverage. I saw it coming. Um, what do you? Uh, what do you? Were you at the Chargers game on Sunday? No, I, I was flying back from I had a wedding for my boy Austin Fly in Milwaukee. So I was actually back in Minneapolis. First time I was there since uh, the 2019 Final Four. You still Chargers man. season tickets? Yeah. Okay, but you weren't. Sold, sold, sold. How many games tickets. do you go to a year? Would you say? I'd say average around three and a half. Okay. Because I go for about a half of one game. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, because I wanted, I was excited to talk to you about the Chargers and Raiders. I watched the game at a you bar did? in Minneapolis at the airport. Yeah, and I and the guy sitting next to me was the word. He was the one yelling fumble and uh, interception, <laughs> and he he was explaining football to the bartender lady who definitely didn't want it to be explained to her. Um, but yeah, I was really impressed. Justin Herbert, unbelievable. And Justin Herbert's story, like he was like a fan of Oregon football, went to games with his family, mm -hmm. you know, and then just like was like, I just want to be the quarterback of Oregon. And now I'm watching him play with the Chargers. I'm like, this guy's like, I mean, he he might be really one of them once. I, whoa, <laughs> I, whoa. I'm not going to say he's him, but I think he might be one of them once. So I'm excited about that. And also the defense looked great. There is a uh, – th there, there are like five or six quarterbacks – the, 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 I, I make this point all the time whenever we, we talk about football. That division has four quarterbacks that I would take any freaking day of the week, the AFC West. Mahomes, yeah. Herbert, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr. Derek Carr. But Those Derek, four Derek Carr threw three picks, so he's not good right now. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. We, we have to and Russell Wilson will find out tonight. If he's good, uh, you're right. He might have just been good in that system. You know, <laughs> like Is he actually good? Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Good without and, then, and then if yeah. he does play well tonight, then it might just be the stadium. Yeah, he's only good in Seattle. Yeah, yeah, he's comfortable there. Can he play in the altitude? Can he play? Yeah, can he play in the altitude? We still don't know. I might tweet that um, tonight. After he wins, can he play in the altitude though? But Justin Herbert has uh, gotten to a point where he is. Uh, um, he's one of the quarterbacks you can't really criticize. Not that I want to, but I'm saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. feels like no, that, he's that he's, cracks me up every year with football. That that if you paid attention to the media and especially on the internet, because the internet is obviously more negative than than uh, anywhere else. But uh, if, if you paid attention, you would believe that there are like five or six quarterbacks that can actually play this game, and the rest of them are just it's bozos terrible. Yeah. with their chicken chickens with their head cut off out there. Um, and it all depends on like what game they're, you know. They're, yeah. Like Justin Fields. It's like Trey, literally the outcome of the game. Justin yeah. Fields and Trey Lance are playing in a monsoon, and the field is just absolute shit. And you can't throw. You can't see ball. five feet yeah. in front of you. And I was in the Midwest during that game, and it was raining. It was miserable. I was like, I can't believe these guys are playing in this game. But like you said, people are like Trey Lance sucks. Yeah. I'm like who can play quarterback? Justin Fields is four for twelve at one point. And you're like, get rid of this asshole. He sucks. <laughs> and maybe he does. Maybe he doesn't. But it's yeah. just, it's hilarious that. Uh, but Justin Herbert has gotten to the point where um, if Justin Herbert was playing in that game and it was, you know, and he was he was five for 17 with an interception, you would just talk about how bad the weather is. You yeah, of talk course. talk about Justin Herbert. That's, of course. That's like rare fight of hair. He's, yeah. already, he's already gotten there. Uh-huh. So that's cool. No, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm really excited uh, to be a Chargers fan. I uh, After I watched the Panthers, which I – I might be convinced they are the worst team in football. You know what I mean? I, I did want to ask you that question: Who you think the worst no, team on. in football they, is after one week? Don't don't even try to rationalize it. Don't it's say Notre Dame. Like... It's definitely Notre Dame. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I think it's one hundred percent Notre Dame. You're right. Okay. Um, yeah, that's true. Okay. So the, the, who's the worst team in week one? Who's the worst uh, team the worst, in football? Worst team in football? Yeah. It's a great question because, like, the, you know, the Patriots they they put their bid in. The Panthers put their bid in. The Colts put their bid in. Um, yeah. The Falcons literally through that game the falcons won every faster that game until they were like oh yeah we're supposed to be tanking so they were in there they're in the mix um but the panthers looked the worst the panthers almost won though didn't it take like a long field goal yeah but at the end the but it, they were never gonna win they, they had losers mentality and did you see what matt rule had on the sideline he looks over his uh, head. he's looked over his head for about five years gotta go back to temple i uh i'm gonna say the the cowboys that's a good answer. I'm gonna say the Cowboys are the worst because I th I think that'd be good for engagement. I think yeah. that's a that's, that's the a answer that, yeah. gets, that drives yeah. aggregators the, love the, that one. The aggregators, yeah. You guys are disrespecting my Jets. Oh yeah, I forgot the Jets played. Yeah, are we? Are they <laughs> the even Jets considered play? a football team? They anymore? played Lamar Jackson. Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson looked pretty good. They got smoked. I assume. I mean, Twenty-four to nine. I mean, the Cowboys and the Panthers scored a touchdown. Is so. what, what's what's uh is Zach Wilson healthy? He's out. No. It was Joe Flacco time. Yeah, what, is Zach, how long is Zach Wilson out? I think like four weeks. Yeah, four to six weeks, okay. something like that, yeah. All right, well, this Should, is... So, Jet, jet season over before it begins. 
Flacco was tanking. Just, Flacco was tanking against the Ravens. That's yeah, all, that's all it was. Uh-huh. There's just he wanted Lamar. To Shout out to the guy, they have Mike White. Dude, we were at the. Uh, I don't know the guy who does it, but the uh, uh, when when the Super Bowl was here, um, I went to a Westwood One party that both of you were invited to, and didn't see you there. But um, <laughs> I was not invited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. Jim was not invited. <laughs> Jim was definitely not invited. Um, the uh, the the. Uh, they they had like a one of the, like a Super Bowl party deal at the top of uh, some some hotel. Whatever. That was Kevin Harlan, right? Yeah, Kevin Harlan yeah, was yeah. was there like MC in it or something. But they had the guy they they had the guy who sets the schedule for the NFL there speaking, mm-hmm. which I thought was like a very uh, nerdy. Like I'm not sure like the the crowd of LA really gives a damn about this, but I was so fascinated listening to him talk about how he comes up with the the, um, the, the matchups schedule. and the master yeah. schedules and what games are going to be prime time and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I forget the guy's name. It obviously left a great impression <laughs> on me, Tate. <laughs> Don't even remember who it was. But uh, I, I was listening to him talk about it. And then I looked up at this week one schedule, and I thought, this is this is incredible with Baker Mayfield playing the Browns and Russell Wilson playing the um, Seahawks. Seahawks. Genius. And then Joe Flacco's playing the Ravens. Like, all the uh, it, it all it all was beautiful. And what's crazy about that is, like, you would have never known because Zach Wilson should have started that game. Baker right. Mayfield was in Cleveland. At the, you know what I mean? Like Khalil he, Mack playing the Raiders. He did all of yeah. this. Like, I mean, he obviously knew something, but it's pretty impressive. Yeah, that was cool. So, have yeah. you ever noticed that when Packers people, also might be the worst team? Oh, what? Packers! Yeah, Packers are the worst. Packers team. are the worst team. Packers yeah. are they the have worst Aaron Rodgers. So the Jets don't. Have no, Aaron Rodgers. And I think Aaron Rodgers is done. I think he's done too. I think. Uh, I think wrap it. And up. I think this is the year Tom Brady retires. Oh, I think, he, I think he retired. Think, think his last one. Yeah, this is his last ride. And uh, what else can we? And the Cowboys are bad. And um, yeah, Raiders also bad. <laughs> Raiders are also bad. Patriots. And Patriots are actually really bad. It looked like. Have yeah. you noticed for the scheduling though, with like a revenge game? That game was in Carolina, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's always the team that left is always playing like at the guy's new stadium. It happens in basketball oh. too. It's really strange. Like when Kevin Durant was playing against, like the or he was with the Warriors. He never goes back to the. Yeah, it's never the first that first. But game that's happening. Come tonight. back. It always happens randomly. Tonight it is. Oh, he's it's Russell in Seattle. Russell Wilson's in Seattle. Oh, yeah. it's in Seattle. Nice. Yeah, which is why it's juicy. And but he's more comfortable in Seattle, like you said. Right. So it's kind of a cheat code for him. Pete Carroll to Nebraska. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Pete Carroll Eric was. Pete Carroll was the Brad Stevens. He, he was a Brad Stevens. <laughs> Pete Carroll from was a Nebraska. Brad yeah, Pete know. Carroll was a Brad Stevens for sure, mm-hmm. <laughs> but then he had success. But but even even like when he won a Super Bowl in Seattle, I was people I, were still like I still thought like oh so now he's done what he he, he went to the yeah. NFL to do now he'll definitely Pete Carroll to Florida yeah. yeah checks out could go back to the Jets we could use it. <laughs> the Jets I'm sorry about the Jets Jim has Tony Bennett said no to the Nebraska job by the way mm. should we keep an eye on that mm. um, Coach I, K. I, th- <laughs> I think it is the dog. They're not going to hire a dog, Jim. Yeah, they can't hire a dog. Can't that, that, uh, even though he's related to. Is there a rule a that says a dog? Notable coach. <laughs> is there a rule that says a dog can't coach? That's football? true. That's true. I don't know. I think that's a movie from the nineties. <laughs> um, it's Urban. Urban's Urban's the Brad Stoops. What about Stoops? Stoops is it Bob Stoops. He isn't that old. Yeah, he coached the bowl game, right? What if Bob Stoops didn't did Bob Stoops coach the Oklahoma? For Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What if Bob Stoops? Did a Rick Pitino and went oh. coached at Oklahoma and then left. That's a good one. And then too. when he Rick comes Pitino back, he goes to, to a rival yeah. of Rick Pitino. To Nebraska. <laughs> Bob Stoops in Nebraska. <laughs> I like that. And it's like a Rick Pitino deal where that yeah. that rivalry gets turned on its head, and all the Oklahoma fans. I think it does have to be either like an old legacy coach like that, like an even like an Al Golden or something, where it's like, oh, I remember when he was the the hot coach or whatever. Mm. And then, or it has to be like someone that no one's ever heard of. That's just gonna be like Sean McVay, like thirty years old in the mix. What about Tom Osborne? Bring him back, eighty-five years old. Mm. I, I'm, I'm for that. I'm pro that. I'm, uh, I let, let, uh, I mean, Joe Paterno coached until he, he died. Basically, he basically mm-hmm. died on the sidelines. I remember when Joe, he got his leg broken. Yeah. I remember that. I was thinking more when he crapped his pants at Ohio Stadium and then had to mm. go change his underwear uh, in the <laughs> locker room. But yeah, there there were many signs that Joe Paterno should probably hang it up, and he refused to. Really? What else happened? <laughs> uh, are you <laughs> moving on? Are you uh, are you drinking the Dan Campbell Kool Aid? I am. Because I think I am. I am. I not only am I drinking the Dan Campbell Kool Aid. When the Lions got up seven to zero in that game, I felt myself pulling for the Lions. Like Jamal Williams <clears throat> had like a ten yard run. And I'm like, 
fist pounding at the at the bar. I'm like, why? I'm like, I'm a Chargers fan. Why, why, am I, why am I invested in the Lions? Um, but yeah, Dan Campbell, how could you not like the guy? How could you not like the coaching staff? And all the guys that – this is the first hard, hard Knocks I've watched all the way through in God knows how long. So, I mean, I, while, I was yeah. pulling for Rodrigo out there. He, was, he made some few mistakes, made a few plays, and it was a really good game. It really was. Dan Campbell's the uh, he's he's got the uh, obviously a type of shtick for ba- lack of a better word that is is better suited for college and um, yeah it seems corny and over, but but again like hard he'd knock, be an amazing college coach. Hard knocks, I guess, like is it, 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 uh, you know I'm not gonna say that by watching hard knocks I actually know what it's like to be inside the locker room on a day to day basic but it but it seemed like all the guys love him yeah and until i start hearing people talk about how he's a cornball and a loser and he's he, he's just a rah-rah guy cheerleader i don't think he is if everyone on the team is buying in then like what he was doing up downs yeah he's a part of the team and i'm watching and he, and like, he addresses them rules. as men yeah I, I, yeah I like i love how he talks to him you know what i mean he absolutely rules he's almost like he's, a throwback he's a coach that if i played for i would i would I'd love run through forever. a brick wall i would for him. i would, yeah. I would, I would but like I would then, you know, like I, I retire, I would only say good things about Dan. Exactly, for the rest I'd of be my quoting life. things that Coach Campbell yeah. told me. Yeah, you know? like this one time I was really down, and Coach Campbell actually came to me and talked to me. You know what I mean? But that at the same time, I also realized that that running through a brick wall is not exactly how you win football games. <clears throat> no, there. Are, <laughs> no, that is true. <laughs> it takes more than that, actually. So uh, I'm curious to see how good of a coach he can actually be. And you know, I don't think I don't think the Lions are. The good news is that he's with the Jumping Lions. Off the page so it's, it's with the like, roster. yeah, but if he lays down a foundation of we're going to compete in every game, we're not saying like even if they won seven games, yeah, eight games, they're close to the line of the wild card or whatever. That's a success for what Detroit had become. Detroit was, I mean, just completely off the Laughing map. No one cares. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And he made me care about Detroit. Um, anything else in the world of football that we care about? You know where Dan Campbell played college football. Texas A&M, right? Mm-hmm. It's Texas A&M. Dude, it's, it's everywhere. But if he... But, it's a pervasive okay, culture. So I can't imagine him Emphasis on cult and culture. <laughs> yeah. But but do you think... I wonder how much the football players have to... Do that. Do that. Not much. Nonsense. Mm. I think it's more like they're Tom Cruise in Scientology, where like everything around they're them just, is staged for perfection, and they're like, how could you not love this life? You know what I mean? Look how great my yeah. life is. But then everyone else is doing some stuff. They're like, what? And they're like, what's happening over there? They're like, no, don't. don't I don't know if that. that's the best example to make it seem like they're not weirdos, though. Well, like, I mean, they're definitely they, weirdos. There, there has to be. They're still a, weirdos. There, there's a skosh of weirdo. <laughs> yeah, it's just a skosh. There's a skosh. You do of have to be a sco- You have you have to be a little bit of a weirdo to go on a recruiting visit there and be like, this is sick. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. When you told me it wasn't a military school, I think I, uh, that's what broke me. But it, but it cosplay, was play. You called it. Yeah. Oh, it was cosplay. Yeah. <laughs> military cosplay. But, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, maybe I'm a weirdo. Cause I did think, dude, just a skosh. I mean, everyone's a little weird. If you, if you went on, if I've if, never been there, if you were, no, I don't even know what I think about it. If you were a five-star recruit and you went to the, I'm telling you, you went to that Alabama game and all the like swaying back and forth and the, the weird ass chance. And like the, the guys in overalls doing the gun shit, you'd be like, this is weird. <laughs> but then when they beat Alabama, <laughs> I'm telling you, it was like, it's like there's clarity, that there's comes clarity, yeah, dude. It all makes yeah. sense. You're like, I get like, it. It, it all, all the puzzle pieces come <laughs> together. And, Wait, I get it. Yeah. I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Had he missed that kick, had he missed it would the be kick? totally different. He'd yes. just be crapping all <laughs> yeah. over it. By the way, I thought of another person for Nebraska. Who? Dominic and Sue. <laughs> Teach the kids. And by the way, he's... I just Googled him and to see if he's still available. He is a free agent, and he said, there's an article, he's ready to be the head coach of the Huskers. Oh, my God. That's a great call. And he, mm-hmm. he's like the Dan Campbell of Nebraska. He, he just says... drills of stepping on people. or Him, like, him doing the Oklahoma drill against his players. <laughs> he used to play soccer. Maybe they're just doing soccer drills. I don't know if you ever heard that. His his, his name image likeness idea is uh, just to dump a bunch of money onto the practice field and let the players fight for it. <laughs> He's like, who wants it? Lock Everyone's them all like, in a room. Coach one guy gets out. Yeah. I mean, Dominican Sue would actually be an amazing coach. I mean, I mean, all the refs would be so scared. Oh my god, they'd yeah. be so intimidated. That's a great point. That's Jimmy. one day. Have the refs. I mean, in his back this is pocket. one if day ago. Nebraska football ref. legend throws yeah. his hat into the ring for head coach. <laughs> yeah, and Dominican Sue, and you know it's real because it's on Fox News. 
<laughs> and and his quote is, "If anyone's asking, I'm ready to be the head coach." Same, by the way, dude. He, there, they, there's a lot of headlines. He's pushing this. I'm, I'm in the can- hire Sue. He said he'll fight anyone for the position. Yeah. <laughs> I'll step on. There are no nuts that I won't step on to get this yeah, position. I'll punch anyone in the nuts. Who do I have to kill to become the head coach? I mean, it's it's one or two options: coach Nebraska or go back and join the Bucks late in the season. You know, these are his two. I mean, yes. Nebraska is better. Um, is, is anything else before we get to shoutouts? No. Should we do shoutouts? Yeah, let's do some shoutouts. Do you have any shoutouts, Jim? Are there any shoutouts, closeouts, anything when um, anything happening? I, I think it's funny that Tate hates Texas football because of Mac Brown. Like, he's <laughs> no, the guy I who dated Texas. your girlfriend. Texas yeah. football is the guy who dated your girlfriend before you. I love Texas. It's hilarious. I said I don't. Yeah, like- why are you threatened by that? Like, <laughs> I know. Can't, like you, you I don't can't, like moral victories. Why can't you? You're be with him enough, now. Be, yeah, be mature You're, enough you to have know Max that. Hart like now. Every like what w- women can't have lives before you. <laughs> yeah. Look, is that? No. <laughs> do you think you own them? Hey? <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. I love Mac Brown and I love Texas football under Mac Brown. I just I don't respect giving losers winner's treatment. That's not for me. I don't I'm not a Duke fan. I I'm not I don't I don't do that. So any more shout outs? Mm. <laughs> no, I'll think of one. <laughs> um the twenty twenty four Maui field is set. It includes according to John Rosty, North Carolina. Your North Carolina Tar Heels. Let's go, baby. Going to, you, you guys are going to Atlantis this year, right? Yeah. And Maui next year? Yeah. Wow. Good for you. And Madison Square, we're in the wait. G- we're no, in the- not Maui next year because you're because this is twenty twenty four. Twenty twenty four, not next so year. Two years, two years. But we're playing in the Jimmy V Classic as well. Doesn't this highlight kind of how insane it is that this is coming out right now? This isn't even. We still have two more Maui Invitationals to play before before this one. This group even played. I think this is a recruiting ploy. I think that North Carolina wants oh. someone in the class of twenty twenty four, and they asked John Rostein to propagate that they will be in Maui in twenty twenty four. Do you to think- get a recruit? To come and play. Do you now. think Hubert Davis will still be the coach? Yes. For this Maui Invitational. Yes. <laughs> yes. Facts. Or do you think Brad? Will Davis Will Armando Baycott still be on the team? It's a great question. That would be amazing. Um, UConn will be in the field. Mm. Michigan State, Memphis, Iowa State, Colorado, Dayton, <clears throat> and a team to be named later. Which, uh, if 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 you're reading the tea leaves, it's probably going to be an SEC team, is it not? I mean, that's yeah. the that's the one power conference is not represented here. Um. The the which Tenn- goes to show that this is definitely like very early on in the process. Yeah, I'm in a confirmed field. Tennessee is playing next year. Arkansas is playing this year. Uh, Texas A&M played last year in Vegas, so it can't be any of them. Yeah. Um, Alabama was 2020 in Asheville. I think they could technically do it, but they probably they, probably, they're probably, won't. They're probably not going to ask Alabama that quickly. Georgia was 2019, the last one in Maui. They're definitely not going to ask. <laughs> yeah, Georgia will not. Georgia be. will not be back. Um. So it's like what Kentucky, Florida, Auburn. I, th- I think Florida. That's who I see in my head. Florida makes a lot of sense. Florida with Todd Golden. Kentucky would be too. If if it's, it's Kentucky, too much. that's too much. It's too much that's blue blood. blood. Yeah. yeah, and in Kentucky and Carolina fans like being at a neutral site together. That's just that's, uh, that's a lot have, of that's a lot of people running into each other and like saying smart ass comments. Dude, Kentucky, Carolina, UConn, Michigan State, Memphis. Like Memphis with the cow part of all this. Yeah. And Michigan State, yeah, that's too much. Too that's, much. That's too much going on. It yeah, we can't. We, we can't have Cal. Probably doesn't even want that. You know what I mean? Florida feels right. Auburn, maybe. Auburn. LSU, maybe. All, but, uh, if Auburn's there, then I can already see in my head Auburn beating Carolina in the championship. Um, but. next year's field, and the reason I'm doing this, by the way, is just to like, like I said, it's still a long way off. But I'm just reminding everybody that Maui is Maui's very much back. Maui, yeah, yeah. Maui oh. rocks. Yeah. Um, next year's field is Kansas, UCLA. Syracuse, Gonzaga, Purdue, Marquette, Tennessee, and Shamana. <laughs> All bangers. That literally. No skips. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, no complaints on this side. Even Shamana. I, I wish Shamana was in it every year. Yeah. I, I do wish they went. The back. every other, though, it but... does make it a little special, though, now that it's every other year. Because when they are in it, I'm going to appreciate it more. And people forget, Shamana should have beat Anthony Edwards in Georgia in 2019. Yeah. And Anthony Edwards hit a three to win that game. So. Shamana was on the verge of a major upset. Maybe Shamana. I feel like they're going to do. They're they're going to go the other way instead of going back to Shamana playing every year. It's going to go to Shamana playing every four years. So every every guy that comes to Shamana gets one crack at the Maui Invitational. If you mm-hmm. stay at Shamana for four years, if you have a four year career, you only get one Maui Invitational. You have to make it count. Um, I don't know. I, that, that would be. Shamana. Now I'm thinking through. Like Shamana winning the Maui Invitational is that. 
the most like is that, that what we're waiting on as sports fans to make yeah. us feel alive again yeah <laughs> i think that would break like the world's brains collectively yeah. I th like since the Cubs won the World Series, I've I've been trying to figure out like what I'm waiting on as mm -hmm. a sports fan now, and it's a Hoosier to win the Indy 500 is definitely number one on my list. Nice. Um, USA winning the World Cup, I think I'll be waiting a while on that one. <laughs> but Shamanad winning the Mount Invitational, that should be on there. I think that should definitely be on there. We're also 69 days away from the World Cup starting on Fox. Are we? Yeah, on 69 Fox? days. You know, they had the countdown when you walked in. Oh, you saw that when you walked in? I was like, that's a shout out. I was like, damn, dude, Tate's a company man here. And you, just, <laughs> you just saw it walking in. Yeah, I was, like, I was like, put that one in the back pocket for uh, shout outs. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Shamanad winning it. The, they just need like a homegrown talent. Or like Ralph Sampson's kid goes to Shamanad and then takes Ralph like, Sampson's promise. kid. Cause, yeah. Ronnie, Ronnie, Ronnie James to yeah. Shamanad. Or Bryce. <laughs> Bryce James. Um. I, uh, speaking of Bronny James and the 2023 recruiting class, I wanted to point out that there is a, uh, I was, I, I told you I'm obsessed with this recruiting class. It's my favorite basketball recruiting class ever. And I, I find myself on a, is it two, four, seven, 24, seven, two, four, seven, four, seven, four, seven, I say, but it could be 24, seven. Well, I find myself on two, four, seven, 24, seven, <laughs> um, because I'm just refreshing. I'm trying to, I still am no closer to figuring out the difference between the composite score and the actual ranking. They're yeah. too wild. Release the algorithm. Yeah. Uh, the, the decimal point that goes down to like the 10,000th. Yeah. Um, I, I, but for I, whatever reason, when it moves, it hits. It hits. <laughs> um, and I, I overlooked this and I feel like I need to bring attention to this. There is a 2023 recruit who is a four star who is number 64 on the rankings, but 53 on composite. Um, his name is Jizzle James, J I Z Z L E James, and uh, I just feel like our listeners and you and Jim, yeah, I needed everybody. To know that. Everybody needs yeah. to know that. Okay. But there's a guy out there. He's a four star. He's from Orlando. He's a point guard, and his name is Jizzle James. And he, I mean, this is great for the Snoop Dogg, uh, you know, portion of the podcast, right? Bill Self brought Snoop Dogg back into the 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 culture of college basketball with his late night. Um, appearance with him and now that we have a jizzle um, here we go let's is... see if he's i'm gonna pull up his first youtube uh all right uh let's see if he's him <laughs> you know what i'm not even gonna watch it i'm just gonna go based off of the title of the youtube so. yeah look at the title jizzle james mid-range game is all caps deadly deadly and he's an elite floor general with uh two exclamation points so mm. i like his game i would say I, I don't think that's him i think that's one of the ones that's though, one maybe. of the ones yeah, yeah. Yeah, he might be the, and then top comment, he might be the best mid-range shooter I ever seen at this level and the way he can create his own shot is crazy. Another guy says IQ brain emoji, makes the game so easy on himself and his teammates you love to see it. One guy says all caps elite. <laughs> One guy says Brudda is elite. Yeah, he's -R -U -D -D -A. elite. Yeah, B-R-U-D-D-A. Yeah, Brudda. Brudda is elite. And then finally the last comment on here, there's only seven comments says Bro's name is Jizzle question <laughs> mark. <laughs> Yeah, I found a totally different video when I just Googled Jizzle James, so I don't know. Where did you find this? <laughs> Wait, are you, hold on. <laughs> I, I heard that, by the way. I just had my mind blown, though. That was a good joke, Jim. Um, I just had my mind Jim blown. just got kicked off the Fox Wi-Fi and reported. <laughs> Holy shit. What? what? What's going on in Jizzle's world? Who's his top five schools? Does he have a list? Does he Holy have a graphic? Shit. Okay, so, okay, I'm going to walk you through this. Oh, my God, my mind is blown. So some guy on Twitter the other day is watching Marvin Harrison. Ohio State, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes, is that son Ohio of State? Marvin Harrison. And he's but, awesome. Yeah, he's great. He's amazing. He's the one player game. on Ohio State that I know, obviously, other than C.J. Stroud. Yeah. Was awesome in the Rose Bowl, was awesome. Uh, he's awesome every time I've ever every watched time. him. Yeah, yeah, he's great. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's going to play in the NFL. Exactly. Um, and some guy on Saturday, as Marvin Harrison was catching touchdowns, tweets at me, uh, Ohio State should have gone because he because you know we've been talking about Bronny going to Ohio mm -hmm. State. He's like you should have as a school focused on getting Arch Manning to Ohio State, taking some of that Bronny energy, throwing it to Arch Manning coming to Ohio State, so that way we could have Manning to Harrison again. Wow, a great call. And then I responded to him. I am now googling what Edrin James's uh, son is up. To. Does Edrin James have a son? Mm -hmm. I shit you not. I did not know this. Jizzle James, his real name is Edrin James Jr. My mind is blown right now. And is is, but he's not. But he's not Edrin James. It has to be right, Jim. Hmm? 
So I said that jokingly, Tate, to this guy. I was like, yeah, you know, because obviously if you're thinking about that Marvin Harrison, uh, Peyton Manning cold era, you're like, who's the running back? It's Edron James. Let's get his son on Ohio State, too, if we're getting Arch Manning. His son is Jizzle James. Now, I, dude, I'm... My, you have my, it to is have... His son. Yeah, it is, it his, is son. his son. <laughs> I've... I've I, I, does he... Does, my mind's blown. My mind's... I, that's does, insane. Does Jizzle Taylor. also play football? No. I'm just... I'm shocked that Jizzle's not his real name. <laughs> I stepped all over your joke, by the way, Joe. I'm so sorry. No, but I saw yeah. as you were making, yeah, it was a good joke. I it's gonna like hit for the list. But, uh, for the friends of the program, they're gonna like it. As you as you were saying I'm it, I saw it. I saw Edward <laughs> James <laughs> Jr. in front of me. That's why I. Uh, that's Honestly, why that's I, amazing. So Ohio State, or who do we want more, Jizzle James or Bronny? That's what, I, dude. My which mind is James, a pretzel right Which now. James do we want? Edron James's other son, Eden, is a running back committed to Howard. By the way, that's great. So he plays football. Shout out to Howard. As you were asking. So if, if Jizzle James <laughs> and Bronny James have one scholarship between them, who do you want? You obviously I, I gotta, want Bronny. We gotta, we you gotta, obviously gotta, want Bronny, but the, we gotta many... end this show. We gotta like I gotta go home and think about this. This is too. You're gonna much. be Charlie. This like this is yeah. This, <laughs> this is, is too heavy, dude. My mind is actually blown. Like, cause I I th no, this that's pretty still, shocking. Yeah, and I love. I legitimately Edwin. had no idea Edron James had a son at all, and I just said I'm gonna go look up Edron James' son, and then spoiler alert, I did not. I did not do that. I just made a little joke that I was going to do that, and then now I'm, I'm here with you live on the air, and I'm pointing out Jizzle James. And I'll be damned. That's Edron James' son. <laughs> what a great name. The world is funny sometimes. Uh, last thing I want to say, my last uh, shout out was, uh, um, it has been called to my attention. I need, I need your help working through this. I, I Talking about Brad Stevens, let's, let's talk about Brad Stevens more because um, it has been called to my attention that the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame that you have visited. Yeah, I loved it. Newcastle, it was Indiana, great, yeah. Um, Brad Stevens is now on the ballot or is considered, is eligible. I guess, I don't know if he's on the, I don't know what the stage, what yeah. the process is. I don't know what the terminology would be. Brad Stevens is now eligible um, to, to be. be inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame, which the the standard, my understanding of it, is that it's just like a, a native Hoosier who, um, you know, brings <laughs> brings good vibes to yeah, basketball yeah. in the like, state of Indiana. Yeah, helps, I don't know. Helps us because it's not even like it's not even necessarily like you're a great high school player, you're a great college player, a great pro player. Some sometimes it's like like Greg Popovich, I think, is in there. It's like if you represent is based to, yeah, if yeah. you represent the state of Indiana in a, in well, a good, yeah. Um, then we will honor get in. you. Yeah. And so the reason I wanted to bring this up, Tate, is because I need your I need an outside voice to tell me should Brad Stevens be eligible for the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame when he went on record as saying he's a mass hole and he loves his New England Patriots and his Dunkin' Donuts and that part of his life is long gone. Where where do, where do should the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame fall in this? Should he, should he be eligible for this? My rule is always to kill him with kindness. And I think mm -hmm. that you kill this man with so much kindness that when he comes back to get his you know induction into the Indiana Hall of Fame, he says to himself deep in his heart, I've made a grave mistake. <laughs> A I want to grave. Coach, I want to coach the Pacers. A grave mistake. What am I doing? Why would I ever saddle up to be in a mass hole mm -hmm. when I have so much hospitality and real love in my home <clears throat> in my home state? So I'm losing my voice because of this this Milwaukee wedding. But uh, but Brad Stevens, uh, I think you have to welcome him back, not with open arms. And and maybe there's someone there that he respects that's older that maybe gives him a little bit of a nudge. Maybe Larry Bird comes and says, "What the hell's wrong with you, man?" That's all he says. Yeah. And Brad's like doesn't really know what it's in reference to, but he does. Uh, now, uh, know what okay, it's in reference okay. to. I think that's the way you get him. Okay. That's how you get him back from the fold because at the end of the day, we do want Brad back to Indiana. So you I, think, I haven't given up hope. You think it's a fight worth fighting to try to get Brad to? Yeah, I'm not done yet. To to <laughs> <laughs> to get Brad to say he's a Hoosier. He's, yeah, he okay. is a Hoosier. What right. do you mean? I, I don't I don't need him to say it. I just need him to stop saying he's a asshole. I don't uh I don't disagree with you. I just I just was curious what your thoughts were on the matter. No, I would never shame someone for trying yeah. to get a homegrown son back to where he belongs. Never. All right. Indiana, you should do it. Boston, leave him alone. <laughs> let, let, leave these Indiana kids alone. Boston just tries to take him away. <laughs> Jizzle James is Edwin James' <laughs> son. Dude, this is this is crazy. Yeah. Uh, any other shout-outs, Jim? No, I think that's it. Any shout-outs? 
Uh, I was going to quickly, before we get out, just, uh, you know, it's not even a shout out, but just uh, an acknowledgement of an old colleague, colleague of ours, uh, Jonathan Jarks, who, um, you know, was a summer league patron that we would always see there. Always mm-hmm. someone who uh, would hit me with Texas basketball thoughts. Uh, I looked back to see my last correspondence with him, and it was from the Final Four. I sent him the media, uh, like, pics of the Final Four game. It was all Duke. And, I, and Sharks is always one of those guys that, like, he would have my back. I, I would be a little bit biased, obviously, a little bit homer. I'd send it to Sharks. I'm like, what's the objective take here, you know? Mm-hmm. Is John Henson, you know, generational talent, or, or am I crazy here? And he would, you know, give me a, a real rational response. I sent him that, and then he responded, yeah, I'm taking Duke, too. And, uh, <laughs> and it was, like, a nice moment of levity that made me laugh. And, uh, you know, he's just, like, one of those great basketball people. He's, uh, you know, I was shocked at how tall he was the first time I met him. Jim and I had to record his podcast over the years, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And listen to Sharks just like give these amazing takes about 19 year old, you know, Estonian kids who were, who were freaks. And, uh, you know, anyways, I just wanted to, to point out that, uh, we're thinking of the Sharks family and, uh, man, life is fleeting. And, uh, you know, when you have people around you, you got to tell them you love them. And, uh, he was one of the good ones. So, uh, I'll miss our time, uh, with him. And, uh, just want to say that before we get out. Yeah, Sharks. Uh, for th- for those who don't know, Jonathan Sharks was yeah. the uh, um, basketball writer, podcaster at the Ringer. All three of us worked with him, um, as you said. Yeah, uh, he was. I I didn't know him super well, um, and and I won't pretend like I did. But as you said, he was always uh, j- just the nature of who he was. He was always so friendly, and would always like any time I talked to him, it was because he reached out to me, and that, yeah. that wasn't because I didn't want to talk to him. It was just that like. I, I didn't really know him that well, but he's just such, he had such like a bubbly personality that he would text, that laugh, man. Yeah, and he would text me all the time about basketball, and then it was usually I would just text, you know, it was like short, whatever. I met him two times. Um, that uh, well, probably more than that because we go to summer league or whatever. Yeah, but I, I remember two vivid times where like I I talked to him one on one and we had like lengthy conversations. Uh, cause he, for, for a long time there, he was uh, I was living in Ohio and he was living in Dallas. And so um, the chances of our paths crossing for work or anything were just, you know, like the, it, it would take both of us coming to L.A. at the same time, basically. Yeah. And which rarely ever happened. And I remember it happened one time and uh, we were we were at a um, company party or something. And, and he and I talked for a little while and I was just like blown away at how nice he was and gracious he was and yeah. all that. And then another time my, my brother lived in Dallas for about a year or two, I, I forget, but uh, I was visiting my brother one time and uh, Sharks found out about it. Um, so he, I don't know, maybe I said I was going to Dallas on a show or you know tweeted about it or something. Uh, and he reached out to me and was like, let's go get lunch. We go to lunch, he just, you know, same thing. I was like talking to an old friend and I, um, I, I, I it, it, yeah, I don't, I don't know how. He, to me, he was an acquaintance, but then like when you're sitting across from him, you're like, dude, have I known you forever? Like this, yeah. is, this is so crazy. And the, uh, the thing that stood out to me about sharks, and and I felt this way from the the two those two interactions I had with him, because like there were times like you said where we were, um, it was like a summer league situation, and there was twenty of us or something. I wasn't really talking to him much, and he was kind of over there and whatever. But like there was, those, I had these two like very intense. I don't know if intense is the right word, but you know, just one-on-one moments that I remember. Of yeah. Like, um, and just from those, I, I, I remember thinking then. I remember thinking it when he was diagnosed. I remember thinking it now that he's that he's passed. Uh, how how strong his convictions and how like like he was a guy who you very he very clearly had it figured out um, in his mind, like what what it is he wanted to do with his life, who he was, who yeah. what he stood for, all that kind of stuff. And that that was something I always respected about him. Like I said, like I didn't know him super well. It wasn't like I was close to him, but um, that stuck with me the moment I met him. Uh, it was certainly if if you followed his his journey throughout um, his his he was pretty public. Uh, yeah. With his, with his cancer journey and um, and he 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 remained that. And I guess I don't know, man. Like that was that was my takeaway and the inspiration I get from him is that he was a man who knew exactly what he was living for. And I think um, that's uh very rare i guess like a lot of us yeah no it was like when i first came out to la for the first time and i was talking to him the convictions and it was was so refreshing like you know i mean we grew up in church and and, you know what i mean and like to have someone in la where you don't get those you know those like real yeah grounding conversations you know talking to him about that and how much he's moved i mean it was 
it was inspiring at a level because you're like, man, this guy, like you said, it's like someone had it figured out and he was such a bright light in front of you. I had I had like one of the most uh, serious conversations I've ever had with somebody about my faith with sharks at a uh, um, a company party. That yeah, we both exactly. away from and just like we're sitting <laughs> off to the side, eating pizza, drinking beers or whatever. And um, and I remember it was it was in a manner that like if anyone else like. I, I wasn't violated at all by it. Like no, if, if no. someone else, yeah, like the, exactly. the, the way he went about it, if someone else had tried that, you know, I'd be like, dude, what are you doing? Leave me alone. Like I'm at a company yeah, trying yeah, to, yeah. but I remember like the, he, he just had like that air about him that like, it was like so easy to talk to. Again, it was like an old friend. Exactly. I was like, what the hell's happening? I remember walking away from him. I was like, did I just go to a company party and talk about my faith for a half an hour with the guy I met for the first time? That's, it, that's weird. That's it weird. But it but it felt right. And, it felt uh, right. Yeah. And he was one of those people that the same thing with basketball, where you could just like I could lob any question, I could lob any thought to him, just like throw it at him, and he always wanted to engage, wanted to talk about the game. And uh, I mean, you talk to any of these scouts or reporters, people around the game. I mean, one of my buddies, Sean Stout, you know, he reached out to me. He's like. Man, I love being at Summer League. I watched a bunch of games with Sharks one day, just like what you're saying. And he was like, we had such a great conversation. And they were both in Dallas at one time. They kept up with each other over the years. And yeah. he was just one of those guys. And uh, it, it's very, very sad, very, very unfortunate. But I think, you know, when when people share the stories of of the time they had and, and the, the way that he impacted them, I think it only grows, you know, the impact. Yeah, yeah and, and I'll say this, too, on the, uh, the part of uh, – talking about how how open he was about his faith was I, what was so fascinating to me was he and, and why i think i was so receptive to that conversation was that um we we i I'll, I'll speak for myself i don't know why i say we but you said both of us grew up in in in, in churches and um you know uh we we certainly are, are not um any strangers to being and having conversations about faith and stuff like that yeah um but far too often the people I know and the people from my community and even that would go to my church when I was growing up and everything, uh, their faith is driven by fear and it's driven by, um, basically death. And it's like, I, I want to, I, I channel this fear I have for when I move on to what's next and I don't know what's on the other side. So I take this system that I have that was built sort of for me and I take that and then I like apply it to this, question that it burns in my mind of like mm -hmm. when i die what happens and so this fear of dying drives my faith and that's what i'm driven by and sharks was again from the moment i met that guy you could tell he was not that way it was the exact opposite yeah and his faith drove not what will happen when i die it was more what do i do with my life and that was like very profound to feel that from talking and again like i all told i talked to that man one-on-one -on -one probably an hour of my entire life um but that's that's something that uh i i that stuck with me it was like he, he the way he was going about it was like i'm not you know I, I i won't speak for like what he was feeling in his final moments and all that kind of stuff but like you could feel that like he was not he was not seeking the answers to the question of like what happens after this he was like why are we here what do we do this for and to that um that's the tough that's a tough question man like that's a question that that a lot of us like even if even people that are have faith and like do think that like there is an afterlife somewhere you struggle with that because you're like okay if there's an afterlife what, what's the point of us right now what's the point of this life mm -hmm. why not just get to get me to the afterlife and sharks had it figured out that like you know or m maybe he didn't and he did a good job of, of making it seem like he did but i i got the feeling that he had figured out like what this life is about and what he's trying to accomplish with his life and that will be the inspiration he has on me um for sure because uh, i think that's a that's an answer we're all looking for but ultimately as the grateful dead said that path is for your steps along and we all have to figure it out on our own so, absolutely uh, absolutely and the wisdom that you know was right in front of our face obviously stuck with us so i mean that that's uh i just wanted to say something i really appreciate you saying that too and uh yeah i think that's all i got for today no we we, we should i mean it's it sucks it's i don't it's 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 we we are very very bad at this, but um, sometimes you got to do it, you know. Yeah, so we're, exactly. we're, we're, yeah. <laughs> we're the two guys who are making jokes about Texas and moral victories and things like that about twenty minutes ago. But this is real, actual stuff that is uh, real life. No, every time, every time we uh, on the show, yeah, we start talking about people passing prematurely. It is just like a huge kick in the nuts. But I, I don't know. I think it's. I don't know. Sharks was awesome. And uh, I say that, yeah, I, I can't imagine the people who knew him and loved him and the family and his, his friends and all that, what, what they, they felt for him and what they it, must yeah. be going through. Cause yeah, like for 
of, again, from my experience, didn't know the man well, um, was was an acquaintance, was a colleague, but uh, those two conversations I had with him, I, I walked away thinking like, is that, is that guy like my best friend? Like what just happened <laughs> yeah. there? <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Um, that must've been some party. <laughs> yeah. It was great. <laughs> Having a just, conversation yeah. Jim, you guys are having this amazing conversation. Jim's smoking a cigarette <laughs> with Kyle behind you. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> you must be fun at parties. Having literally the opposite of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is no God. It's like, it's like literally heaven and, and hell next to your ears. Kyle, like, Kyle's, <laughs> Kyle's on the uh, punching bag trying to re- register the high score in the bar. Just keep punching as hard as you can. Yes, that, <laughs> that is it. Baking out somebody else's car. <laughs> let the doors open. Um... <laughs> You know what else was yesterday? What's that? Oh, that's right. I think I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. Go for it. 9-11. No, I was going to say Ludacris's 45th birthday, Mm. but to try to enlighten the mood, but yeah, 9-11. No, I was going to say, I I, I hate that this is where I've arrived, but- You um, just think about the suite last year? I think about the suite. (laughs) Yeah, I think about this week. I think every nine eleven. I mean, obviously, <laughs> that was your nine eleven. Obviously, it's not all I'm going to think about. But like, nine yeah. eleven last year was the Ohio State Oregon game. That was when Jim, Jim Cunningham was he drunk. zoned out, thinking yeah. about nine eleven and yeah. getting called out. Jim got a finger in his at. face and said, "This guy's drunk." Yeah, get this drunk guy out of here. Yeah. And Jim was like, oh, "What is happening?" <laughs> yeah. I might have to the go. Fall guy. I'm going to go re listen to that show that we did. That was I, a good one. That was f- so funny because I had no idea what happened, and then <laughs> you both said, "Just wait until I tell you," <laughs> and uh, it lived up and beyond. Um, good one. Anything else? Is that it? Nah, is that the that show? I, I got to go home and figure out this Jizzle James situation. Yeah, my mind. Go I, I literally yeah. just looked at the list of recruits. I saw Jizzle James as a name, and I was like, I got to point that out to the guys. They're going to want to know yeah. that. And then now, if I was LeBron, I'd reach out to Edron James, say we should both have our kids go to Ohio State together, and then the backcourt is the James Gang. <laughs> LeBron, and okay. that's already LeBron's hashtag and everything. So he just, you know, he just keeps the brand going. Jizzle and and. Bronny. Jizzle and Bronny in the backcourt is so sick. Are you kidding me? Like they don't even have to win games. People will watch to watch LeBron James and Edron James watching Ohio State together. We got it. Okay. LeBron's right. officially right. an Ohio State guy. If you get Jizzle and Bronny, we gotta go. I gotta. I gotta. <laughs> I gotta go figure this out. I need to. I, I got some research to do. Yeah. My mind is blown. Yeah. Yeah. Get My mind going. is blown. Uh, we'll see you guys Friday.